lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you another 8th of the Great and we're going to be talking about the other half of the science and biology books I read in my hiatus. So like the title suggests we have 8 books to talk about today, these are all science, biology, history of science related um, and I'm kind of vaguely theming them in order of like preference. Most of these I really enjoyed, I do have a couple that I want to talk about that I didn't particularly enjoy but let's focus on the positives for now. So the first book I wanted to talk about is I Contain Multitudes by Ed Young. This is an incredibly popular popular book on booktube, it was out quite a few years ago and is a look at microbes and our microbiome. So this is looking at the bacteria that lives in the world and how we quite often have a symbiotic relationship with it and how this is changing our interactions with medicine and health. Um, this was such a wonderful read, I actually listened to it on an audiobook and it was one of those audiobooks that I was finding myself just coming up with excuses and tasks and things to do that would keep my hands busy to can be able to continue listening to the audiobook. Like my house was the cleanest it had been in a while um, because of wanting to keep the audiobook on. Ed Young has a real lovely natural writing style, it moves with kind of a great pace and I think he manages to condense down some complicated science ideas into um, quite simple language and the microbiome is just incredibly cool and we're learning a lot about it and it was just something that was really really interesting and it's opening up how we understand bacteria and moving away from this sort of sanitised aseptic way of approaching the world and understanding that actually sometimes we need good or indeed neutral bacteria to remain so that that way we um, are not susceptible to the bad bacteria out there. It talked about antimicrobial resistance which is a really big thing in um, veterinary medicine which is where I work so it was really interesting as well from that side of things. The next book I wanted to talk about is Some Assembly Required by Neil Shubin. This is decoding four billion years of life from ancient fossils to DNA and it's basically looking at how DNA and um, genetics and evolution can work together to um, kind of create these changes that we see. And it's basically looking at the argument of like it's all very well that we say evolution but how do we get such complicated things like flight and eyes and the incredibly complicated systems that we have in our bodies from minor changes that are supposed to just be helping sort of individuals thrive for a little bit longer like how do you get these collection of things coming together and this was basically talking about the idea of often they are left over from something else that had a um, either wasn't directly helpful or was helpful for a different reason and then when you get a sort of fortuitous lining up of these things you end up with whatever big dramatic change sort of evolutionary leap forward that we're looking for. Um, so the classic one is flight and how we develop flight and feathers and how they sort of flight came from uh, lighter bones due to the size of dinosaurs and then you end up with pneumatic bones as a way of kind of metabolism and then you end up with gliding for very different reasons and feather as, feathers as potentially insulation and then these all come together to form the ability to then actually truly fly. Um, so it brings it all the way up to modern day and just talks about kind of genetics and the genome in general. Um, um, really interesting, really accessible. I actually preferred this book to uh, The Gene, which is kind of the big book about the gene out there. Um, and I thought it was really, really interesting um, as a read and had a lot of very lovely um, sort of history of science going all the way back to paleontology, which as we all know, I really appreciate. So very good fun, multidisciplinary book here. The next book I want to talk about was really big in 2020 for very obvious reasons, and that is Spillover by David Quarman. This is a beast of a book that is basically looking at the term zoonosis, which is where diseases jump species, more specifically when they jump from animals into humans, which was obviously an incredibly big thing in 2020 because bats is how we got COVID. This book came out I think in like 2016 or something, but there is actually a chapter on SARS where David Quarman actually essentially predicts COVID occurring, talking about the sort of um, the meat farm markets in China and how they could be breeding grounds um, and then how if SARS was slightly different in sort of how the disease presented it would be a lot more infectious um, and spreadable and how that could result in something bigger on a global scale. This book doesn't just look at COVID, that is only one chapter, it also looks at a whole range of different diseases and does include things like the origins of HIV which was really really interesting. Um, like I said it's a chunky boy, it is a solid I think 600 plus pages. I listened to it on an audiobook and I found that really accessible. Um, it almost felt like a reading or like listening to a series of podcasts each chapter being on like a different disease so for me that made it feel a lot more manageable and approachable and I would totally recommend that um, but yeah just an incredibly comprehensive look at something which is incredibly fascinating how species can make jumps but also very scary um, because it definitely as we saw in 2020 can cause massive problems on a global scale and there's no reason to think that this won't happen again in some way shape or form so it's one that 
is quite popular on booktube but i do think it's definitely worth the hype and worth checking out one that i talked about in my august wrap up i think is rebel cell uh, by kate arney and this is cancer evolution and the science of life and this is looking at an understanding of cancer as sort of an inevitable feature of things being able to evolve and being able to have those like minor tweaks of genetic changes because where you're going to have that happen things are going to go a little bit wrong and not all changes are for the best so it looks at some of the prehistoric fossil records of cancer and the fact that we find cancer in plants and across all sorts of different animal species the prevalence of it in different species and what that can tell us about how it appears in humans and it's basically refuting the idea of cancer being a modern day illness which apparently is something people believe that seems really weird to me it clearly is an obvious conclusion of evolution but hey what do i know um and then it also looks at more modern day approaches to cancer and how we can change both how we diagnose it but also how we treat it and sort of the way that big pharma slash drug companies and capitalistic pressures as a whole um to not go too conspiratory in the corner um will impact the kind of drugs that we make and the way that we approach treating it um very accessible very very interesting and again in a similar way to um how some assembly required I think is better than the gene. I think this one is better than Emperor of Maladies. I know that that is the big cancer book. I think this is a lot more approachable. I much prefer the writing of these two to whoever it is who wrote the gene and I can't remember the name off the top of my head, apologies. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting book. The next book I wanna talk about, I think I did mention on my channel, there is like a random three uh, science books review that I posted in like December of the year of my hiatus. Um, but either way, I'm gonna mention it here as well and that's uh, 10 Drugs by Thomas Hager. This is how plants, powders and pills have shaped the history of medicine. And it's literally a just look at 10 different drugs and how they have dramatically impacted um, human medicine and humanity as a whole it's really interesting it looks at things like the pill um, and sort of uh, female contraception and how that has changed things socially as well as things like the opioid crisis um, statins and sort of the way that we approach heart health and it's a general real interesting look at how drugs are made how drugs end up on the mass market and how they can quite often things can be hailed as the wonder drug and then the um, implications when things are potentially over prescribed at times um, very accessible you really don't need much of a science background for this one most of the chapters are quite short it's not particularly big as a book but it's a lovely sort of breeze through and it naturally follows sort of a, a history of medicine at the same time it does kind of go chronologically as it goes through so it doubles as a little bit of a brief history of medicine as well and i love it when things get a little bit multidisciplinary we're not just talking about modern day drugs here we're talking about the discovery of a lot of these things really really interesting now we're getting into the realm of the ones that i wasn't as bothered by but i still think that they're worth a read and i think that there is an audience out there for them um so one of those is this is your mind on plants opium caffeine and mescaline by michael pollan i enjoy the fact that his surname is pollan and it's a book about plants that made me smile and was a major factor in me buying it in the bookstore not gonna lie this is looking at three different kinds of drugs that come from plants or derivative from plants um, and the way that they can impact sort of our brain chemistry and how they can cause changes in us I enjoyed the opium and the caffeine one. I didn't like the mescaline read because um, it happens during COVID and I just thought it felt a bit weird. Um, the opium one was very interesting because it looked at the author's experiences as a reporter or some kind of like newspaper writer trying to grow and brew opium tea at the exact time that there was the war against drugs in America and the weird logistical legislative loophole that poppies represented in the war against um, opium and opioids in general and with that things like heroin. Um, so quite interesting from a social perspective as much as it is a look at opioids in general uh, and then the caffeine one was absolutely my favorite part of it because um, it was a really interesting look at what is essentially the most rampant addiction that across our globe and one of the fun things that i kind of picked up from it was like this idea that it's incredibly difficult to study the effects of caffeine because you cannot find a control group because every person on this planet basically has been overexposed to caffeine their entire lives like even kids drinking coke are are rammed with caffeine like you don't necessarily fully stop your caffeine intake when you're pregnant it's something which we kind of grow up with a caffeine addiction and how um it has functioned socially it looks a little bit like the social history of caffeine as well really really interesting like I say, the mescaline one didn't really do it for me, but I do quite like his writing style and you can almost treat this as like an essay collection of three shorter essays. You could totally leave whichever one of them that you weren't interested in. So for me, the caffeine one was great, worth a read. Another one that 
I think there's definitely an audience out there for it, but for me it just didn't quite jive. Um, and that's The Painful Truth by Monty Lyman and the new science of why we hurt and how we can heal. It looks at the biology behind pain, some of the emotional sides of pain, um, and then sort of multimodal approaches, and some of the holistic placebo effects out there. For me, there was a lot of conversations about sort of the way that the human brain approaches pain. And because I work with animals, I wasn't as bothered by them. And it did seem to feel like it kept bumping into problems of like, well, then how do we rationalize how this works when we have um, living things that we can't explain what is going on and sort of how do we interact with that? So for me, it's sort of, it, it didn't quite work, um, but it was very, very interesting at parts. And I think if you um, know nothing about the concept of pain and how it actually works in the body, this is a real great introduction. And it is an interesting look, especially in some areas about chronic pain and how we treat that as a society, because it's something which um, I don't think we are particularly good as a society at acknowledging and dealing with. And there are many people out there who do suffer with chronic pain in a variety of different medical disorders. And so it is quite interesting from that side of things. So still worth a read, but just not one of my personal favorites. And then the last one that I actually really didn't enjoy, but I do think that there is a market out there for it, which is why I'm still including it in this video. And that is Heart by Sandeep Jahar. This is um, basically, it says heart a history. It's really not. It, the guy who wrote it is a heart surgeon. He's a cardiologist. It is a combination of a little bit of the history of um, hearts, heart transplants, how we've learned about how hearts work, the circulatory system as a whole, and those parts of it I really enjoyed. But then it also had lots of stories of his time as a doctor, and I'm kind of over reading books by doctors where they clearly have a god complex and kind of hate their patients. And there were just quite a few times where he came across as incredibly arrogant um, and incredibly condescending, and I really didn't like the way that he spoke about some of his patients, and there was a lot of times where I was like, this anecdote is adding nothing to my knowledge of the history of the heart, and this isn't doing the work that you think it is, it's just an excuse for you to talk about your time where you're a big hotshot doctor. And I've read quite a few medical memoirs, I will link a video down below about medical memoirs, my TBR, the good, the bad, whatever. I'm finding more and more my interactions with medical memoirs is, like the science, hate the person. So I might have to just walk away from them as a genre and come to the conclusion that I've read too many and I'm kind of over it. Um, and I think too many of them are trying to recapture that idea of Adam Case. this is going to hurt and they don't do a very good job of it. But, the big but in all of this is the science of the heart in this was pretty cool. So if you're happy to skim read the doctor parts, I do think it's worth a read. It was very, very interesting. It does talk about the first human heart transplant among other cool things and sort of how pacemakers work and stuff like that. Um, but I found him really, really annoying. That is it. Those are eight science books slash biology books that I would totally recommend. I think were really interesting, definitely worth a read. Do let me know if you've read any of these down below or if there are any in particular you think I would really enjoy. I am now starting to reach the point when I'm looking in the pop science, especially the medical section of pop science and bookstores is unless it's got a big selection, I'm starting to run out of books I actually want to read that I haven't tried already. So let me know your recommendations in the comments down below. Um, that's pretty much it from me. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.